Hey guys, thanks for joining me today in this new episode of Lenses for Astrophotography brought to you by AMPNF. So in this episode today of Lenses for Astrophotography, uh, it's a special review that I'll be making and I'm so stoked today because I received the brand new Sigma 14mm um, F1.8 DG Art, um, which is the newest uh, Sigma lens for full frame. And why am I so stoked? It's because it's the first of its kind at 14 millimeters to have an aperture, minimum aperture of f1.8. So that's why I'm so pumped, so excited to, to test it out. The point of today is to make you decide whether or not you want to buy this lens because it's a pretty expensive lens as of right now. Um, but today we're going to be testing the quality of the lens and we'll be answering the question, is it a suitable lens for astrophotography and especially for single picture astrophotography? Um, and in my case precisely, I bought it because I want to do time lapse with it and take advantage of the, um, the, the really wide minimum aperture and shoot at 1.8. So we'll be testing uh, you know, the coma, the uh, distortion and the vignetting at 1.8 and see the quality of the picture. So you know what? Let's jump right in. Out of the box, the first impression of this Sigma lens is a very solid yet very heavy lens for an ultra-wide angle. It weighs no less than 1.1 kilogram, so if you have a heavy camera to start with, it might make handheld shots difficult, or even if you fix your camera on the tracker mount. It's no real problem for astrophotography as you will have a tripod, but it might be something to bear in mind for other situations. With that being said, the finish of this lens is just beautiful, and it really feels like a solid metallic lens. The hood doesn't have any clicking buttons, it just fits smoothly back on, which is a plus. The glass itself is a masterpiece with a neatly curved area and beautiful colors, underlying the good quality of the material. The focusing ring is a relatively big rugged band at the tip of the lens, but it really integrates to it and doesn't make it impractical or awkward. The ring turns smoothly, allowing you to focus correctly and rapidly, but the reasonable stiffness of it allows you to focus extremely precisely and prevents the focus from budging. It has a very wide field of view of 114 degrees, a minimum aperture of 1.8 and a maximum of 16, making it a candidate for ultra high performance and quality cameras. The first impression of this lens when shooting with it is its ability to easily focus at night. I had no problem focusing precisely on a distant object at infinity with the manual focus. The autofocus works really smoothly too, but remember to try and focus manually as much as possible, avoiding any focusing adjustment that would ruin your shot. I made a series of raw test shots at different apertures with matched total exposures to test for brightness, sharpness, distortion, coma and vignette. Unfortunately the full moon was up and it didn't allow me to shoot in a totally dark condition, but I was amazed by the brightness of this lens. It is an extremely fast glass for its focal length, and together with its wide aperture, it helps gather tremendous amounts of light. At f1.8, I brought the exposure time down to 3.2 seconds and ISO of only a thousand to get a correct exposure, which is an excellent performance even with the light from the full moon. The extra 4 stop in comparison to f2.8 for the next minimum aperture of most 14mm lenses is a game changer in itself, helping to bring an appreciated 1.3 extra electron volts. This extra wide aperture can seem like it's no big deal, especially for its price, but in reality it can have several practical applications. Firstly, it can help reduce the exposure time. A 20 second exposure at f2.8 can be reduced to only 10 seconds at f1.8. It can be decisive if you're shooting a fast moving object like an aurora, or if you're on a tight schedule shooting a time lapse of the Milky Way. However, the latter won't be moving very fast at 14mm, and the point of a time lapse is to accelerate things to see them moving, so in this case it can be irrelevant. 
Secondly, it will allow you to reduce the ISO. If you possess a camera that creates a lot of on-chip and off-chip noise, watch my tutorial on noise if you wonder what it is, you might want to bring the ISO down a notch to reduce the amplification. When you look at the image series, there is a subsequent vignette from the center to the corners, maybe a bit more than your usual 14mm. However, the gradient is much smoother than a lot of lenses, and it can still be corrected in post-processing. As for all ultra-wide angle lenses, there is a great concave distortion around the corners of the image, but it is much lower than for my Samyang 14mm f2.8. It can more easily be corrected in post-process. It is probably the feature that remained with a question mark on it, as some Sigma lenses are known to have an accentuated coma in the corners while shooting wide open. Too heavy coma can create disturbing cross shapes in the edges of the picture. At f1.8, this lens has some coma, but I am amazed by how almost invisible it is. Don't get me wrong, you can still see it, but you need a keen eye or zoom in on it to really start saying, huh, eh, it doesn't look right. It's excellent news for time-lapse photography, and Sigma has really made efforts compared to the 24mm f1.4 to reduce the coma. They have really packed excellent quality glass in there. Stop down to f2.2 to have the coma divided by 2, and f2.8 to see it forever removed from your shot. This is also excellent news for astro panoramas, as you can really start stacking or stitching your picture using f2.8, which you couldn't before with a regular 14mm f2.8. Flare is definitely visible because of the curved shape of the glass, and sources of artificial and natural light will result in more and less framed flares. I have a big one here on the picture because I'm shooting in an urban area with a lot of light pollution. But other reviews of this lens suggest that there is no flare when shooting in darker areas or completely opposite to the moon. This is the feature that is hyped the most about the lens. According to Sigma, the lens has, I quote, exceptional optical performance ideal for ultra-high megapixel cameras. It means that it can probably be used for 8K resolutions, a good news for high-quality media producers. After testing this lens, I can confirm that everything Sigma boasts is true. It is to me the sharpest 14mm lens I've ever tried. Stars are pinpoint sharp, even wide open. Maximum and corner-to-corner -corner sharpness is reached at f2.8. If you stay under an exposure time of about 10 seconds, you will get rid of any star trailing and the celestial objects will appear in their best possible way. As I mentioned in my previous tutorials, I wouldn't recommend the other 14mm f2.8 to get extra high quality time lapse of dark sky situations. You would generally have to stop down to at least f4 to get a more decent shot but then you lose all the benefits of the low f-stop. This Sigma 14mm f1.8 is a game changer in this matter, because now you can shoot wide open and get a much brighter, cleaner and sharper image. You can almost shoot like your 24mm f1.4, but at 14mm to get more of the Milky Way. My only worry was the coma, but you can see that even wide open, it's still incredibly decent and you still have the possibility to stop down to f2.2 to make it almost undiscernible and still be two stops higher than f2.8. As a conclusion, Sigma has produced a monster for astrophotography and a major improvement to the other 14mm f2.8. It will surely enable you to get shorter but cleaner and sharper exposures. The only worry one could have is the coma, but it's really insignificant wide open, almost invisible at f2.2 and completely removed at f2.8, enabling astro panoramas previously impossible at f2.8. I would not hesitate recommending this lens for any amateur or professional astrophotographer to replace their old 14mm and get even higher quality shots. However, some people might be scared off by its price, a mere 1600 bucks, so I would advise waiting a little bit for its price to fall, but I would definitely consider buying this Astro Monster of a lens in the future. So that's it for today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed this 
review of the lens Sigma 14mm f1.8. I'm actually filming with it right now. And uh, I really hope that uh, it helped you make up your mind about um, whether to buy it or not. I really hope you're gonna buy it because um, I'm rarely biased when it comes to astrophotography and anything in general. So um, I know uh, when a lens is good for astrophotography and I know uh, I can discern a good lens uh, from a bad one and this one is a monster of a lens. So I really hope that uh, you're gonna buy it and you're gonna try it because it promises uh, to be awesome. I'm gonna travel to Iceland at the end of September to um, test out the lens with the Aurora and I'll be posting on my social platforms and my website the pictures and the results um, and hopefully also some um, some wide shots of the Milky Way and time-lapse of the Milky Way. I would also appreciate if you liked the video if you could give it a massive thumbs up and share it and of course subscribe to my channel and of course I would love for you to help me uh, continue making these videos by being a patron so go to patreon.com, I will be posting the link in the description below uh, along with your comments and questions of course. But um, if you want to support me in any way you can, please do that and I'll make sure to post a lot of, of uh, my experience and other reviews and tutorials. So thank you for your support and see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.